Stop trying to eat the microphone. Stop trying to eat the microphone. I know it is fluffy and you love to murder a fluffy thing, but let's try our bestest not to eat microphones today. If I hold it in my hand, if I hold it in my hand, will you not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Winnie. Hi everyone, welcome back to another pizza party. I'm Mrs. Pizza. This is Winnie, and she's obsessed with the fluffy bit on my microphone and is trying to eat it. It's actually wet right now. Don't know if you can even see that, but it's wet. I've decided I'm gonna name it Bert because it looks like Bert from Sesame Street. So somebody tried to eat Bert. She's also about to lose her nonsense because I think the pest guy is here. I love you. Can you sit over here? No. Can you sit over here? Can Can you sit over here? Just right. Right there, wherever you want. <laughs> Hi kids, welcome back to another pizza party. Let's try this again from the top. I'm Mrs. Pizza, this is Winnie. Apparently she's a little extra needy today. And today is a special day. Today is my birthday. I know, I know, should be a national holiday. But today we are actually here. It's not a toy, it's a microphone. It's not for you. It's not for you. You have so many toys. Don't nervous yawn at me. You lit, there's a squirrel right there. I just gave it to you. It was your favorite thing until this showed up. And this is not for Winnie's. Look at it. It's all wet and mushy because you, you bit it. Let's try this again. Third time. Third time's the charm. We are here to talk about my top 10 favorite books I read this year. I actually had a little trouble coming up with this list because... I read a lot of books from all over the place, and so this book list just felt chaotic. And then I thought about it, and that is my reading style. Just all over the place. Just up in the attic, down in the basement, and every room in between. So I am okay with it. I'm okay with it. My top 10 list has literally just no cohesive through line. I'm okay with it. I absolutely adore watching everyone's top 10 books of the year because I think it's really cool to kind of see the books, like, you know, sometimes you go through your books and you don't remember what the hell you read in January. And then you're like going back through your list and you're like, oh my gosh, love that book. And these people, these people that are making like top 20s and top 50s and top 100s, I'm happy for you, but I don't have that kind of commitment. It was hard enough for me to like, to say these 10 books were my reading year and I enjoyed them. Not that I had a terrible reading year, but I read a lot of books that were just kind of like middle of the road, three star, not bad, not great, just average. So let's talk about my top 10 books of 2022 in no particular order because it was hard enough to even, I'm not putting them in order. There is no order. Life is chaos. Here we go. The first book we're going to talk about, and I feel like every single person I can think of picked this book up this year, and for good reason. It was a great book. I'm not a huge memoir fan, and I really enjoyed this memoir, and that was I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This book is really, really heart-wrenching. Just the things that poor Jeanette went through as a child. I mean, her mom was a narcissist and a hoarder and forced Jeanette into an acting career, even though she verbally expressed, at least on one occasion, if not multiple occasions, that's not what she wanted to do. Mom wanted to be an actress and didn't make it, so Jeanette was going to be an actress. I'm pretty sure the pest guy just got here just now. She's going to bark. You ready? that guy for coming to your house, right? How dare he? How dare he, Winnie? That's a very visceral, it's very scary. Yes. That kind of sounds like a whale. <laughs> what is, what is happening? Yes, you, that was a very big hoof. I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McCurdy. Jeanette tells the story with a super dry and sometimes a little bit dark humor. It's This book is great. That's all I can really say about it. It really is great. I didn't know anything about Jeanette before, prior to reading this and was very impressed. Not only how she delivered the story, but just she was born to be a writer. She's a good writer. And I hope that in the future she writes some more stuff because that's what you hope. When you like a book, you're like, dear author, please write more for me to consume. I didn't even, where is my phone? I'm just like free ball in this whole situation. You cannot have Bert. He's mine. He's my microphone. He is not your toy. Ma'am, ma'am. 
Ma'am. <laughs> what is happening? This is going great. I am so... I am so enthusiastic about what's happening right now. This seems to be going really, really well. Let's just talk about the second book on the list. This is going to take me hours to get through because we're just going to keep getting sidetracked. I see the eyes you are making at this fluffy thing. The longing that is in your gaze right now. The next book we're going to talk about is Legends and Lattes, and that is by Travis Baldry. This book, I feel like, took all of these social media sites by storm this past year. It was originally released independently and has since been picked up by a major publisher. And there is a second book that has been announced. It is happening and I'm excited about it. But this first book follows Viv. She is an orc mercenary who has reached the end of her orc mercenary career. She's ready to retire and in retirement is going to follow her true dream, which is to open a coffee shop. So she moves to this small town in this fantasy world and proceeds to open a coffee shop and kind of gather employees, make friends this town has never heard of coffee before there's this winnie i want this is just i look forward to the editing situation that this is going to be because this, this is chaos there's also something on my lip I'm pretty sure it's part of bert this book is described as a true slice of life cozy fantasy and that's exactly what it is it is adorable it is like a hug or a warm cup of coffee it is like a latte in a cozy cafe if it was a book i really look forward to the second book which i believe is going to be a prequel and take place about 20 years prior to the first book happening so i know at least viv is making an appearance in the second book but i don't believe she is the main character it's adorable and if you haven't read it i don't know do you love yourself if you do go pick up this book if you don't you should pick up this book anyways maybe it'll give you some of that serotonin you know that we all need this time of year i really really enjoyed this book and i feel like it set me down a path looking for more of that cozy slice of life fantasy and a lot of people as well. I feel like everyone said, yes, this is what I've been searching for and I found it. Thank you, Travis Baldry. The next book we are going to talk about is one of my all-time favorite books and I'm so glad I found it this year. I found it at the very beginning of the year and I haven't shut up about it since and that is Sword Heart by T. Kingfisher. T. Kingfisher is now officially one of my favorite authors. I have just destroyed their entire fantasy backlist under the name T. Kingfisher. I do believe that this author has another name they write under as well, and I have not read anything under that name, but I just went through everything I could find that T. Kingfisher had their name on. This book, Sword Heart, is the story of Hala. She is a little bit older, was married years ago, her husband passed away, and when he passed away, she moved in with his elderly uncle to help be his caretaker. Well, then the elderly uncle passes away and he had a lot of money and a house full of crazy oddities and he left it all to Hala. Now, his family is not okay with this and their plan is to marry Hala off to another one of the family members so the money stays in the family. Hala is not into it because, first of all, all these people are evil. But second of all, he's got really gross clammy hands. I think he wears a lot of rings. I don't remember. He, you wouldn't want to marry him either. He doesn't sound great. So in a moment of desperation, Hala finds a sword in one of the rooms full of oddities in the home, unsheaths it, and out pops a man whose name is Sarkis. And he is the servant of the sword. And this is... Something that I would also describe as a cozy type fantasy because this isn't an epic save the world, save humanity from the big bad. This is Sarkis and Hala going on a journey to save Hala from whatever fate this nasty family had in store for her. It's also got a little bit of that found family element, which I think T. Kingfisher does exceptionally well. They just know how to write found family slash friendships just top notch. Just top notch. And that is one of my favorite things in books. I love a friendship. I love a found family, especially they're just these people would probably never have come into contact. And yet they all come together. They've all got their part to play in the group. And in the end, you know, they've been through some stuff. I guess that's all. That's what found family is. So I love it. I love this book and I will scream its praises from the mountaintops. This is one of those books that I was actually listening to it on audio, which I highly recommend the audio book, but I was listening to it on audio and proceeded to buy a physical copy. I think it's right here. She's here on my pile of chaos because I ordered a new bookshelf and when it finally showed up, it was in flipping pieces and just broken all to hell. So now we are having to have someone come pick up the new bookshelf to return it. And I am starting this 
the search for a bookshelf all over again, just from the beginning. So my books have to live in the cube, in the cube prison for just a little bit longer. If you haven't read anything by T. Kingfisher, I would tell you that Sword Heart is a great place to start. The first two books that take place in this world, I believe, are The Wonder Engine and The Clockwork Boys. It's a duology. And all of the books, kind of, well, not all of the fantasy books, but quite a few of T. Kingfisher's fantasy books take place in the same world that is introduced during that duology. But you don't have to have have read that to step into any of these books. You get kind of a basic understanding and each book kind of expands on the world a little bit more. It's okay if you don't know all of the city names or what they mean, because you're probably going to be focusing on one city or one or two cities traveling between them in each book. If I could make you read any book on this list, if you are a fantasy reader and you love a cozy read and you've already read Legends and lattes because I'm pretty sure you probably have. Try Sword Heart, especially if you like fantasy romance. This is super sweet and lovely without being extremely spicy because I think that kind of throws some people off of fantasy romance. Although I'm here for the spice. I love me some spicy books. The next book we're going to talk about is not necessarily a new book, although none of these books have to be a new book. They're a new to me book and that's what matters. But this one I think is one of the older ones on the list and that is Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. Bye. I actually bought my copy of Neverwhere when we were in New York on vacation, and I was so excited because I had never even heard anything about this book before, and now that I've read it, every person I know that is, you know, read any Neil Gaiman books is like, yeah, of course I read Neverwhere. How how did it take you so long to find it? It is a lot of fun. My understanding is this book was actually written in tandem with a TV show that obviously has the same name. It follows the same story that Neil Gaiman was, he was writing it, anything that wasn't put into the show or that the, you know, showrunners either vetoed or decided to go in a different direction, he ended up putting it in the book. So the version of Neverwhere that I read is the version that Neil Gaiman really wanted. At least it says that in the foreword. I got my highlighters out and was just going to town on this book. There are some of the funniest, like, descriptive imagery in this. But let me back up. This is the story of Richard. He's a normal guy that lives in London. And one day... He literally stumbles over a woman on the sidewalk whose name happens to be Dora. And in deciding to help Dora by picking her up and bringing back to his apartment, he accidentally opens his world up to basically the upside down. It's... I believe called the London Below. How I would describe this is Alice in Wonderland, but if it took place in London and instead of Alice, it was a guy named Richard. And instead of going to Wonderland, it's basically a world that exists just below London and is almost a mirror image. There is a goblin market. There's just crazy over the top kooky characters. There are also sinister characters that are after door for who she is and what she's able to do. Richard just gets pulls, pulled into this whole world completely by accident and has to live with the consequences of basically helping a person in need. I really, really enjoyed this. And this is one of those books that is like listed on Goodreads as book one, as it's supposed to be part of a series. But I'm pretty sure this book was written in the early 90s and there is no sequel yet. There is a short story or there was a short story that was published later that is attached in the version I read about one of the characters but I think that's the only extra writing that's been expanded on this world and I would read the second one right now if it was available I would do it it was so much fun I'm also a Neil Gaiman fan though although I haven't read American Gods because that one scares me I'm sure I would love it but I just want to deprive myself I wish you could see my dog right now she's literally wearing the drapes as a as a hat she looks like a nun wearing a habit you're beautiful but also strange. Next book we're going to talk about is another book that I feel like I have been singing its praises since I finished it. And I want people to pick it up, but I don't know how to convince people to read it other than just describing what it's about. And that is The Undertaking of Heart and Mercy. This book is steampunky, but like not really. It takes place in a very intricate fantasy world, but again, felt very cozy and small because you're only following basically two characters and the family and friends that directly surround them. But this is the start story of Heart and Mercy, obviously. It's basically a fantasy with gods and demigods, 
but also is a Western, but like also is that movie You've Got Mail with Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks. But then like there's zombies. It sounds absolutely insane. It is so much fun. I had never read anything from this author before and had no idea what to expect, was completely sucked in. I thought I would pick up this book, read a little bit, kind of work my way through it slowly, and it consumed my weekend. Like I could not function until I finished this. And at the end, that last little bit, I was sobbing like a great big old baby. And then you close the book and you just have a big stupid smile on your face. It was, it was so good. It was so good that I want to read it again. I want to read it again. Basically, you're following Hart, and he is our cowboy kind of character, like a, a ranger situation where he is tasked with crossing this veil to go hunt basically zombies. When he gets rid of the zombies, he then has to take the zombie bodies to this undertaker to have them properly disposed of so, you know, they don't get up and walk around again, I guess. And the undertaking mortuary funeral home, I, know, I don't know what to call it. And I feel like I always do this when I just list all of the possible names to call this place, but the place where he takes the bodies is owned by Mercy's family, and Mercy and Hart had a very prickly first meeting and have kind of been at each other ever since. But there is a very fine line between love and hate, and unbeknownst to Hart, he, in a moment de of desperation, of loneliness, what have you, has put his thoughts and his feelings into a letter that he doesn't address and just sticks in a mailbox thinking it'll be gone forever. Happenstance, through magic, through serendipity, what have you, it gets delivered to Mercy and they become pen pals without knowing that they are writing to one and the other. That's how it becomes You've Got Mail. This book was so much fun and I loved it. And that's why it's on this list. <laughs> All right, so this is instantaneous for you, but my camera decided that it was just not gonna record anymore. So, you know, I just kept talking and talking and the little light didn't tell me. When I realized that it wasn't recording, I said, screw it, and I wouldn't eat another piece of cake because it's my birthday, so I do what I want. Okay, the next book we're gonna talk about is A Taste of Gold and Iron, and this is by Alexandra Roland. It's a fantasy romance, but it's very politically driven. This is the story of Kado. He is the spear to the throne. His sister is currently queen, and he has just been pushed one more rung away from the throne by the arrival of his brand new baby niece, and he could not be happier. Kado is not entirely well equipped. He's anxiety. He's so anxiety. He is a vibrating ball of anxiety. He has a lot of trouble dealing with his anxiety and it expresses itself in different ways. And when you first meet him, he is not doing so great. Then a political upset happens is what we're going to call it. And he is then given a new bodyguard. And that is our character, Evamir. Now, Evamir is grumpy and broody and very by the book. And these two characters don't necessarily get off to a great start. They don't hate each other, but there's a lot of misunderstanding, I would even say, about what one and the other, where they come from and their motivations, both emotional and just... I'm rambling. Here's the thing. When you first start the story off, you're not going to really love either one of the characters. But as the story goes on, as these two characters start to fall for each other and learn more about each other, you also start to fall in love with the characters. By the end of this book, I would have given... I would have given an organ. They could have had a kidney. Like they were, I loved them as much as they loved each other. This is an extreme slow burn and there's a lot of politics. There's a story going on in the background where Kado is trying to figure out what's happening. Is someone after his sister? Is someone after him? Where is this coming from? A lot of political stuff is happening, but the whole time you're following this prince and his bodyguard around, the descriptions of the costumes in this and the world that's built is really interesting. This is also one of those fantasy worlds where the author has taken a lot of time to include people of different gender orientations, sexual orientations in a very fluid and natural manner. It's very inclusive in a very great way and I really enjoyed it. Also the cover is beautiful. All of the covers I have seen for this book have been beautiful and I'm surprised. I heard a lot about this in the beginning and I think that's when it first came out, I think that's because the covers are every version of the cover I've seen has been gorgeous. I don't think enough people 
I don't know. Everybody go read this. It's beautiful. If you like politically driven fantasy romance, you're like a slow, a slowy, slow, slow burn. I love this book and I will definitely read more from this author. The next two books we're going to talk about, this is kind of a cheat, but they, I put them both on here because I love them both so much. And that is That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon and That Time I Got Drunk and Needed a Love Potion at a Werewolf. Both of these are from the Mead Mishap series by Miss Kimberly Lemming. I love this series. I even love the novellas. The first novella, I believe it happens after the first novel and that one is Mistlefoe. And then the most recent novella to come out was like a Halloween novella and that one is A Bump in Boo Hail. That was a bunch of book titles I gave you. Let me tell you what this series is about because I love it. The first book, That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon, follows our main character, Cinnamon, also known as Sin. One night she goes to a festival in town, walks home a little bit intoxicated, hears someone in distress, and when she goes to help, she accidentally saves a demon. Adventure ensues, and that demon, whose name is Fallon, is our love interest. This is so funny and fun. I mean, Sin is a cinnamon farmer, which like it should be stupid, but it works. And Fallon, he likes to scare cinnamon, which is funny. I, these books are a lot of fun. And I feel like everybody who really enjoys like monster type romances, but really enjoys funny fantasy romances, these are for you. I love them. I feel like I have spend, I will spend the rest of my life trying to convince people to read this series. The second book in the series, That Time I Got Drunk and Needed a Love Potion at a Werewolf, follows Brie, who is Cinnamon's best friend and the town's local cheesemaker, and she falls in love with a lactose intolerant wolf. Again, should be stupid, totally works. I definitely recommend the novellas as well because one of my favorite characters, a sentient sword, is introduced in Mistlefoe. And our sentient sword is obnoxious and so inappropriate, but like the best. The apps, just the best. Love that character. I love these stories. The next book, one of the main characters has been announced and he obviously is introduced in one of the previous books and I'm really excited to see what Miss Kimberly Lemming does with our third installment and what amazing title she can come up with because those are magical titles and I love them. If you haven't read anything in the Mead Mishap series yet, what are you doing with your life? Why are you even here? Go read the book. I'll be here when you get back. This is YouTube. You can pause me. Come back anytime you want. I mean, that's kind of creepy, but I just live here now. The next book we are going to talk about is the only Beauty and the Beast retelling on this list, which is surprising because I read a lot of Beauty and the Beast retellings. I'm a big fan of Beauty and the Beast retellings, as I feel like most fantasy romance readers are, but that one is In Treat Me by Grace Draven. This story is the story of Levain. She is a widow and now basically the head of the household for her father and younger sister. Her younger sister is you know, a world renowned beauty, basically. She's super duper hot and everybody loves her. But unfortunately, she has caught the attention of our villain. And Levain is trying everything to keep the villain away from our beautiful sister. At the same time, our beautiful younger sister has fallen in love with a beautiful hunky man and the two of them ride off into the sunset to get away from our villain. Now, Levain is not having this. She's already got to take care of her dad and all his nonsense all the time. And now her sister just runs away with some dude she barely knows. She's not having it. So she follows her sister all the way to the estate of our beautiful hunky boyfriend's daddy. And his name is Ballard. Ballard has been cursed and has some physical deformities. The castle itself has some magical nonsense happening. And this is the romance between Levain and Ballard. Ballard is a grump. Levain is a prickly, prickly feral creature. She would go toe to toe with anyone to save those she cares about. And she's my favorite, I'm not gonna lie, because everyone around her just be doing some stupid nonsense most of the time. And she, she has to clean up their mess once again. I liked this one because there were different twists on the backstory of why our Ballard has become sort of beastly, why the castle is cursed, and even though in most versions of the story you would be following the beautiful sister and the beautiful sister's beautiful boyfriend, and this one we follow Levain and Ballard around and what they're up to. Like most Grace 
Draven stories. This is very fairy tale kind of feeling. A lot of her fantasy romances have that kind of very fairy tale feel to them. And I think that's why I really enjoy them. If you prefer that in your, you know, fantasy romance to feel like you're reading some very magical fairy tale situation, then highly recommend almost any of her books. But try and treat me if you're a Beauty and the Beast fan. I really enjoyed this one. The last book on the list is Red Rising. This one is by Pierce Brown, and this is the first book in the Red Rising trilogy, but I do believe there are five books in this series so far. I think there's three, the three main books, and I don't know what the next two books are, but it keeps going and going. This was sold. <laughs> this was basically pitched to me as Hunger Games, but for grown-ups, if that makes any sense. This is the story of Darrow. He is a red, which is a class of person that is kind of the lowest caste. They are miners, and they have been sent ahead to terraform, mine this planet in preparation for the rest of humanity coming here, because the world is going to end or something like that. Darrow slaves his life away without really any aspirations. They're all just going to keep mining and mining, and that's what they do. They're pitted against each other kind of a little bit by those in charge. And the colors above them, because all of the casts in this world have different colors, the top one is gold. The gold are seen as the elite, the smartest, the bravest, the strongest, and they're the ones in charge. Well, Darrow finds out one day that everything's been a lie and that maybe there's already people living on the planet up above them, but the Reds have been kept in the dark so that they keep slaving away so that society above them can exist the way it does. And he is then swept up into this plan to basically infiltrate the powers that be from the inside and take them all down. So we are following a red on his way to become a gold and take society down from the inside. I loved it. The book is a sci-fi book that feels like a fantasy book, especially for the bulk of it. I loved this. I have gotten the rest of the books in the series so far. I haven't gone on yet, but that's the story of my life. I have a million series that I'm like, I read the first book, I fall in love, I will continue, but do I? No. So that is one of my goals of 2023 to complete some of these damn series that I love the first book so much but I haven't kept going because why like of course I need to do that why would I not do that <sighs> but that kids is the end of this pizza party I have rambled about books per usual this one was like extra chaos I'm hopefully gonna edit out most of the chaos but I wish you could see the nonsense that was me trying to record this video I hope you're reading good books out there wherever you are and I'll talk to you next time <laughs>